Hello, welcome back. It's John Bauman again. Here is another application of supply and demand. In this case, we're looking at the labor market. So when you look at the graph here, we can see that the upward sloping curve is the supply, but it's the supply of labor. And the supplying is being done by the workers, by us, the people. And if you look at the downward sloping yellow curve, it's the demand for labor. And the demanding, or the hiring, or the buying is done by businesses. So in this case, demanding is done by the businesses, and the supplying is done by the people, the households. As you can see, the equilibrium wage, free market wage, is at $9. It's at the intersection of the two yellow curves. And it looks like about 33 million people, let's say it's millions to make it realistic, 33 million people are being hired at that $9 free market wage. So this is in an area where the cost of living is relatively high, let's say New York or Los Angeles. And uh, the uh, businesses are paying their workers a relatively high rate. Now, the question says that uh, it's asking about a free market wage being high and that the minimum wage is well below the market wage. So let's say that the minimum wage is at $7. So the uh, $7, uh, let's see if we can, mm, so $7 is right here. And as you can see, at the minimum wage, the minimum wage is below the $9. So what a minimum means, the government says we, businesses have to pay at least $7. So, but the businesses are already paying $9. So the weights that businesses will pay will still be $9. The $7 is really inconsequential here. And uh, the first question says, what will be the effect on full-time employment if the government increases the minimum wage a little bit? Let's say the minimum wage goes up from 7 to $8. But again, the businesses are already paying 9 in the free market. That's just a normal equilibrium. And so an increase from 7 to $8 will have no effect on uh, the quantity demanded and quantity supplied. So the answer to, to part A of this essay question is that there will be no effect on full-time employment if the minimum wage goes from seven to eight dollars. Again, because it's a, it's a minimum. Part B says what will happen if the government increased the minimum wage above the nine dollars, above the free market wage. So now there's gonna be a difference here. Let's say that the minimum wage goes to $10. And the businesses really, according to the market, want to pay 9 but the government is requiring businesses to pay 10 So now there's going to be a difference. And let's say at 10 if we draw a little line over there to the demand curve. So that means that at 10 businesses are only going to want to hire, you know, if you draw a line straight down, to the quantity axis, uh, about 30 or so, 29 or 30 million people. And if you draw a line to the supply curve, now people, workers, like this high wage, so there's going to be a lot more people interested in working. And so they, it looks like around maybe 36 million people want to work at that high wage. So what's going to happen at 10? There's going to be a difference in, let's say this is 30 uh, at, the, um, at the $10 at the intersection of the demand curve. And this is, let's say, 36. So there's going to be a difference of 6 million workers. And that's actually an increase in unemployment of 6 million workers. So there will be a surplus of workers because the wage here is higher than the free market wage. And there's going to be an increase in unemployment and there will be a decrease in full-time employment if the, as in, in case B, the uh, question B, if the minimum wage that the government sets goes above the market wage.